uh, Richard Swinburne. Thank you very much for the book, with 85% of which I am in full agreement. Uh, but may I take up one of the points that uh, worries me, and that is that you both advocate the notion of uh, our identity as being constituted by a, uh, an information system, uh, a software, and uh, therefore our uh, resurrection at the last day will consist in the uh, instantiation of this software in some new body. Uh, the trouble with this, the traditional objection to this, is of course God could instantiate all our memories and character and so on uh, in a new body, but he could do it in a hundred new bodies, and uh, which one of them would be me? Uh, the mere fact of some future person having my memories and character is not enough to guarantee that person being me. Now you may say, God wouldn't be so silly as to do such a thing. Well, that. <laughs> in that case, uh, the consequence is that uh, my surviving my death will be a result of God not doing something to create another person. And it's very odd to suppose that my surviving my death will depend on what God does to a body which won't be mine. Uh, how can what happens to somebody else make a difference to whether I survive my death or not? So I do find this a very implausible theory of what my survival consists in. Um, the only alternative for the theist, in my view, indeed the only philosophical alternative, for, in my view, is the view held by about 1% of the philosophical community, viz. substance dualism. Um, if you were to, wanted to know the whole history of the world, and you were, as it were, shown a film of it from advance, you would see all the bodies there were, and if the film was a very good film, it would show you all the memories and character there were, but you still wouldn't know which person is you, which indicates there is a lot more to you substantially than mere memory and character. Thank you, Richard. Um, first of all, let me say that um, I don't for a minute think that, that human beings are computers made of meat. So the software analogy, hardware analogy, it's not useful, but it's, it, it's clearly, clearly inadequate. We are striving, those of us who are dual aspect monists rather than, rather than uh, dualists, we're striving to find some, some way of articulating that. And of course, we're waving our hands. As Thomas Nagel said, we're f f indulging in pre-Socratic flailings around about things we don't fully understand. But it does seem to me that's the better way to wave your hands than to what is to me the implausible notion that we are, we are really uh, apprentice angels trapped in the fleshly husk of a body. I do think it's a foolish uh, thing to say that why, what stops God uh, creating a hundred copies of me. What stops God doing that is that God is consistent and sensible and doesn't play the foolish game of creating many, many clones. And, the, and I think if, if the, the person who, has, who is resurrected, re-embodied in that way, has my memories, my character, as far as we can understand these things, is me, un 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 unequivocally. Jeffrey Raisman, I'm only a simple scientist, but I get the impression that many of you on the platform believe in the existence of God and know or have a sense of what is the character of God. For example, he's good, benevolent, and so on. Where, why do you believe in God, and why do you think you know what he's like? That's a rather enormous question, and I was tempted <laughs> to say, read, read the book. Um, we, I, I guess both of us, if we had to give a one-word answer, it would be Jesus, uh, that we see in the life of Jesus something remarkably transparent and compelling, and if you're prepared to accept, at least as a hypothesis, Christianity, I'm, I'm not trying to convince you that Christianity is true, I'd love to be able to do that, but I'm on modest goal is to convince you that it's reasonable. Uh, and if you start from that hypothesis, if you will, then a lot of strange things about the world seem to make a lot of sense. But I think to give an exhaustive list of all the reasons why we might want to believe in God would be it would take us a very long time. Quite a lot of it's discussed in here in some depth, and there are plenty of references. 
No, I mean, I, 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 I think the, the order of the world and its fruitful history suggests there might be a divine mind and purpose behind it. That doesn't tell us what God is like. If, God, if we're to know, learn, learn more about God, God will have to make God's nature, nature known in some way. And I do believe the strange, mysterious, exciting, and I think true Christian belief that God has acted in the most accessible way to make the divine nature known through living a human life in Jesus Christ. So, but so that, would take a, that would take a long time to justify, and I, in this book and others, I try and do my little bit. So you think only Christian belief uh, points to the existence of God? No, 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 certainly not, of course not. Um, I, I think the old idea that we try and prove God is, is not popular these days. I, I myself don't think there are any knockdown proofs of God. Um, and as a scientist, um, I, I often ask myself, is, is this theory... I can't prove that a theory is correct as an explanation for the physical world. I can disprove it if, if there are facts that contradict it. Um, but what I can say, ask, ask the question, is whether that theory is consistent with my, my, my experience of the physical world. And in the same way, as a, as a, um, a Christian, um, it seems to me that, for me personally, the existence of God is consistent with my experience, my experience as a person, my experience in, in the community, and so on. Um, and I wouldn't want to go beyond that. As to whether you, I believe in the Christian God or the God of, of Islam or the God of the Jews, um, that there was a question that um, was asked at, at one of our public lectures. We actually had um, um, a Muslim come along and talk about Islam, God, uh, Islam and science. Um, and what I've been doing with each of the lecturers is to take them into the local high school. And often they get the, the best questions, actually, from, this, from the school children. Um, and one of the questions was, um, how do you know that Islam is better than Christianity? And his reply was, I don't, I happen to be a Muslim, but I th we're sister religions, we all believe in the same God, we're on a, on a mountain, we're climbing up a mountain along different paths, and, and I think we'll probably meet at the top. <laughs>